Well, good morning. It's great to see you and welcome back to the shop where, as you can see, we're not in the shop and it's actually not even morning. The reason we're back here by the air conditioning unit is that we're going to do a follow up on an episode that we did a little while back where we put a missing system on our air conditioning unit out here. There seemed to be a lot of interest and I got a ton of comments, which I really appreciate both, you know, the critical ones as well as the ones sort of encouraging me or, you know, offering suggestions. I learned from all of it. And, you know, it's not about me being right about this or wrong about that. I am just trying something new to see what happens. And so I value everybody's input, but I thought it would be an interesting follow up to incorporate a couple of the changes that I've made as a result of some comments and some things that I was planning on doing anyhow, and then just testing the results and seeing, you know, if they made any difference. So in terms of what we're gonna to cover today, I'm gonna to show you that I've replaced the solenoid that I had before that was a 240 volt solenoid with a 24 volt solenoid. And instead of tying it into the, the main circuit, I'm simply just gonna tie it into the thermostat wire that's coming from the house that every time the thermostat sends a signal to uh, our unit here to turn on, uh, it also turns on the misting system. So that's number one. Number two, I did hear everybody's concerns about you know the scaling that's possible with some of the uh, residue minerals left behind after the water evaporates. I'm going to be adding a filter. I think I mentioned that a couple of times in the in the comments. So we'll be adding a filter. I'll show you that. And after that, I want to take some time to uh, try a couple of things that a couple of viewers, a couple, three viewers had suggested. The first being some sort of shade as an alternative or maybe even an addition to the, uh, the misting. So some sort of shade that, to put over this, uh, this unit that uh, shades the air around the unit and creates sort of a cooling effect. And then the other one that I was kind of intrigued by was to see if we could move these nozzles out a little bit so that as the water gets sucked in, it has a chance to atomize a little bit and it increases the, uh, the effect of the, the water evaporating on the condenser coils, which is what really causes those coils to cool down. First things first, let me show you how I switched out that solenoid and put that new one in as well as added the filter. So let's go do that. I'm about ready to switch over my solenoid from a, a 240 volt to a 24 volt uh, that is run off the thermostat here. But the first thing we do before we start messing with that is we're going to just turn this system off because we don't want it sending a signal out there while we're trying to wire that up. It's 24 volts. It'll give you a little bit of a little bit of a jump. So we want to make sure that doesn't happen. We turn this off. So let's head out to the unit and I will show you how we wire that up. All right, we are out here at the unit. Uh, as you can see, I've got the power off, although I think that's overkill because um, we have the thermostat turned off inside. So I don't think there's much of a chance of this kicking on while we're out here messing with uh, with a couple of these connections. But we've identified the the black wire is the common wire. The yellow wire is the wire that is coming from the um, from the inside thermostat. So we want to hook up these two red wires. We take these wire nuts off. And uh, it doesn't really matter which one of these leads goes to the common, which one goes to the wire from the thermostat. But uh, we're going to take this off and uh, see if we can't just wire this around like this. I poked myself there a little bit. Scared myself a little bit too because it kind of feels like a little bit of an electrical shock. But I know that that's off. And then we're going to just wire these together. I screw in this new, it's a little bit of a larger nut than this one. This one was just accommodating a couple of a couple of wires. This one's got to accommodate three. So tug on them a little bit, tug on them a little bit just to make sure that they're all kind of in there. And now we'll do the other one. <clears throat> Pick that up. And just want to twist these together. Yeah, do a better job than that. Like a pretty rinky dink way to do it. Let me just see if I can't. There we go. Yeah, that's better. And then we just screw these on. Okay, same thing. We kind of tug on them a little bit, make sure they're not going to just pop out and just sort of tuck them back in here. Now the rest of this, I brought it up through this. I'm going to 
I'm going to tie this uh, these wires up so that it kind of follows these and I don't have a bunch of wires just kind of dangling all over the place. But uh, I'm going to put the uh, solenoid back here closer to the faucet. I don't know if you can see that or not. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to put this over it. I picked this, picked this bad dog up at a garage sale a little while ago. It sure does beat messing with a, with a sledgehammer uh, and trying to bang this thing into the ground. You just... That ain't going anywhere. So there it is. That's my new replacement 24 volt uh, solenoid that works the same as the other one. It is a uh, normally closed unit. So when it gets a signal, in this case from the uh, thermostat inside, uh, that also sends a signal to the unit telling it to turn on, uh, it opens up and uh, sends the water through here. You can see I've got my water filter on and then the rest of it is all pretty much the same. So. I also have the switch, same switch as before, and it is on right now. So we're going to go inside and we're going to turn the uh, thermostat back on. And uh, that should send a signal to, uh, to this and to the unit to, to start up. And uh, we'll look out the window, see if we can't see that uh, system working. If it's not, well, then we've done something wrong, but we'll see. All right, here we are back inside, getting ready to turn the system back on. Oops, there we go. All right. And we look out the window and we see that the, uh, the misting system is now on. So it appears that the thermostat did its job, sent a signal to the unit to turn on, and at the same time activated the uh, solenoid. Here we are back out at the unit. So this is the, set, this is the setup here. Now uh, we've got the solenoid on there. We've got our filter coming right off the solenoid and feeding the misting system. Here's our on-off switch. If I flip it, then the misting system turns off. Again, because the thermostat isn't satisfied, it is sending a signal for the unit to be on. And when it's sending that signal, it, it also sends a signal to this solenoid. Anyhow, that's where we're at. So let's, uh, let's move on to implementing some of the suggestions that a few of you left in the comments. I think the, uh, the first one we're gonna try is just measuring the, uh, the, the temperature of the air coming out of the top here. Anyhow, let's go get our uh, thermocouple and uh, we will measure uh, the the temperature coming out of that top of the unit with the misting system on and with the misting system off and see if there's any difference. By the way, if any of you are wondering why I'm not using an infrared thermometer, it's because, you know, those don't measure air temperature. They just measure surface temperature. So people who are pointing a, a laser type of device at, at a surface or even at air with a surface behind it, really what they're getting is the temperature of the surface behind it. So I've seen some people use those where they measure the uh, output temperature at a uh, register, for example, when they put one of these in place. And they're not necessarily getting the temperature of the air coming out. What they are getting is the temperature of the metal on the, um, on the register. So that's why I use this. Currently, as I said, it's about 81, 82 degrees out here in the sun. And let's just test that temperature coming out the top. Obviously it's fluctuating up and down a little bit, but we'll call it 85 and a half because it was a little lower than that, a little higher than that. So 85 and a half. Now let's turn the uh, missing system off and see if there's any appreciable difference between the two. Go over here, we'll just flip this off and uh, we'll give it a minute or two. Ah, no we won't, we'll just put this right on there and see if there's a difference. 94 and a half, nine degrees warmer than with the system on. I think we're gonna leave it at that. I'm not real interested to see how high it can get, but I think that we can say safely that, you know, there's a difference in the temperature of the air coming out of the unit, which means that the unit is working harder to cool the air that's coming in and maybe not being quite as efficient at doing so. All right, I think we're gonna call it there and just say, yep, there's definitely a difference. All right, and according to my handy dandy Bluetooth connection to the uh, to the unit. It looks like the live current or the running current right now, currently with the misting system off, is about nine amps. So now let's turn the misting system on again, and we can measure as the live current uh, with the misting system on. So let's do that. Come around here. Misting system is on. We can see it all, almost 
almost immediately dips to 8.6 amps, 8.5 amps, 8.4 amps, 8.3 amps. Okay, it looks like it's settled in at around 8.2 amps of live current. So the temperature at the register here is 55 degrees even with the uh, misting system alone on. Now we're going to go out and we're going to put the cover over the top and see what happens there. Turn the misting system off and we're going to put a cover over the top of this and see how that does. See if that has the same effect as, as misting or maybe even a little bit better. So let's go ahead and turn this off. So this is what I came up with, just a simple cardboard piece with a hole cut out in the middle so the, the air can uh, escape the top of the unit while leaving the bottom part in the shade. And we're going to let that go for a few minutes and then we're going to start measuring things. All right, with the cardboard covering uh, most of the uh, unit except for the uh, fan shroud, uh, the air coming out of the top is 92.7, 92.8 degrees. So with the shade on the unit right now, the live current or draw is 8.8 .8 amps. Go inside and we'll measure the uh, temperature at the register, see if that makes any difference. Okay, so with the cover on and no misting system on right now, inside at the register, the uh, temperature of the air coming out of the register is 57.6. Okay, so now we have moved the, uh, the misters about a foot away from the, uh, the unit and we're just checking the live current so I don't know that it's shown any uh, any real difference. 7.9, maybe a little bit. We'll see. I'll have to go back and take a look at the numbers, but seven, I'll call it 7.9%. And it looks like the uh, temperature of the air coming out of the top of the fan shroud is about 87.3 degrees. And I think before it was something around 85 and a half, something like that. So that seems to have gone up with uh, the misters having been moved out just a little bit. Maybe they're too far, I don't know. We're going to go inside and we're going to measure the uh, temperature of the air coming out of the register, see if that's different. It looks like the uh, temperature of the air coming out of the uh, register is steady at about 58.8, and that is with the, uh, the nozzles being moved out away from the unit a little bit by about a foot. So it looks like it also is counterproductive. Okay, and finally we're putting all three together. We've got the uh we've got the uh, nozzles moved out about a foot away from the unit to allow for the mist to atomize a little bit more we've got a shade over the top to provide cooler air uh theoretically going into the unit so we'll see if that combined helps anything i, I don't have a lot of hope for it because it seemed like uh either one by themselves wasn't doing a whole lot but let's take a look let's measure just like we did the others Okay, temperature coming out of the uh, top of the unit by the fan. So as far as running amps with the cover on and the misters uh, pulled away from the unit a little bit, we're fluctuating between 7.8, 7.9 amps, which is about where it was with just the misters on it when they were attached to the grate. So folks, I think that that's going to do it for this vid video. You know, it seems like there's not a whole lot of difference. If anything, there might be uh, a little bit of hurt by, uh, by messing around with the system from when I originally set it up. But I want to clarify that, you know, this is a pretty small sample size. It's a test of one. You know, in order to get a really accurate reading, you'd have to do this in all kinds of weather, at all kinds of days, with all kinds of temperature, and whether the sun was on it or whether the sun wasn't on it. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, variables and factors. Whether it's windy, you can see the misting uh, being blown around a little bit now. Probably gets blown around a little bit more when it's when it's away from the unit like it is now. So um, I would lean towards it doesn't make any difference, but I, I wouldn't say definitively we've, we've made that determination. As far as today and just kind of checking this out and giving you guys some feedback, uh, that's what we found. You know, if you uh, have other suggestions or comments or observations, please leave them in the comments. I really, really do value those comments, whether they're critical or whether they're uh, just observations, whether you've got a suggestion or an idea, I'd be willing to try any and all of them uh, as we go forward. Anyhow, that's going to do it for today. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it informative and entertaining. Please leave a comment. As I said, 
uh, leave a like for me and subscribe if you would. That would really help. And we will see you in the next one.